Whether you're looking for answers to specific life questions or seeking to become the best version of you possible, welcome to the Mental Breakdown and Psych Reg podcast, where we offer insight, information, and strategies based upon research and years of practice as clinical psychologists. So sit back, have a listen, and get connected with our hosts, Dr. Bernie Wilkinson and Dr. Richard Marshall. Welcome back, Richard. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say today. Right? I know. I, I know. Can. I know what you're going to say. Good morning. Today. What day is it today? I am so happy that we're going to talk about this today. I was today. to get that right. What day is it today? The day we're recording or the day it's going to post? Because as of right now, you are probably, uh, as of the day that this posts, you're probably flying back from Arizona. Uh, that's That would be... Saturday, right. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we are... Except for the time delay. Except, right, right. So, okay. But today we're going to talk about smartphones. And this article, uh, of course, this article caught our eye because of the, uh, the title. And, you know, there is something about the title of an article that, you know, if you get the right title, you, you, you're going to catch readers. Yeah? They caught me. Yeah. It's called Smartphone Use in America. Is it contributing to cognitive decline? Yeah, this is an issue that many people ask us about right. when we do talks, when mm-hmm. we do patients. Uh, what it, it is all of this phone use? Mm-hmm. Most people are concerned about their children. Some right. are concerned about spouses. Mm-hmm. Most are concerned about children, especially teenagers. And is the cell phone uh, affecting cognitive decline in any right. way? Is yeah. it affecting cognitive abilities in some way? Right. Yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of talk about cell phone use and, and, you know, th- that segues very easily into the use of social media and, and gaming and some of those kinds right. of things as well. So yeah, because we have, is... and, and then the whole issue of addiction, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. and, we, and we've talked about that yeah. many times on the program, the, the internet, social media, mm-hmm. video games, and smartphones. Right. And, um, are these things, um, causing any decrements or any declines in cognitive abilities. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. one is addiction and one is, uh, are there any negative effects? Right. So we're going to kind of go through this, this column today, this article today. Um, it's, from, it's from the blog uh, World of Psychology mm-hmm. at Psych Central. So psychcentral.com, uh, they have different blogs and this blog is called World of Psychology. And so uh, Suzanne Kane yes. wrote this article mm-hmm. about... Smartphone use in America, and so we're, we're gonna. She she has a lot of points here that I think are important for us to talk about, and so that's why we're gonna spend a little bit more time kind of digging into this a little bit. But before we do that, but before that, and this is commercial free, so we're not gonna take. Before that, we have to break for a commercial. No, none of that. First smartphone. Uh huh. When when did smartphones first appear? I don't mean to put you on the spot. Nobody knows this. I think it was. Uh, well, the, not the iPhone. Right. The iPhone was not the first smartphone. Right. I didn't um, know that. It was probably the, was it the late 90s? Early 90s. Early 90s? Yes. IBM created... I had a decade, right? You, which, is, which is actually very good because the iPhone didn't come out until 2007. Right. So it's 10 years, it had a 10 year mm-hmm. anniversary yeah, and the iPhone 10 would be coming out, right? Mm-hmm. Is that correlated? No, uh, no. Okay. I don't think that. I don't know that that iPhone X is. I don't know that that X is supposed to mean Not ten. Species. Okay. I don't know. But the iPhone is ten years old. Okay. But the smartphone, mm-hmm. the first smartphone was in, was um, developed in 1992 by IBM, mm-hmm. and it was about the size of a uh, portable phone that you would have in your house, a cord free. Uh, you're right, right. Okay. Right. It was about that size. It would fit in a little bit larger than the palm of your hand. But it did most of the things that um, an iPhone does, but it had a stylus mm-hmm. instead mm-hmm. of a touch screen. I think what right. the iPhone brought was the touch screen. Right. I think that was the part of the new technology, plus faster software. But um, yeah, it appeared in 92, and there was another one in 1995. But they were based on those old... Um, PDAs. The PDAs, Mm -hmm. which stands for Personal Digital Assistant, like the Palm Pilot and Mm -hmm. those sorts of things, which had a stylus and you could keep track of your calendar and notes and all that sort of stuff. So the the smartphone, uh, the original smartphone, there were 50,000 of them sold Mm. um, in 1992. I had no idea. They were about $1,400 or something. Um, In today's, today it would be comparable to $1,400. But the uh, iPhone 8 
mm -hmm. which just came out, is right. bumping toward a thousand dollars. Yeah. Right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So I didn't know that. Yeah. So, um, so they've been around for a while. Right. But it really took off in two thousand seven. Right. With the in the mid two thousands, with 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 the with the Apple phones, but also with you know as Samsung got on board and right. some of these other. Um, providers got on board and they started creating, you know, touchscreen really. Mm -hmm. uh, became... That's what that was the game changer. Right, right. Yeah. Because remember before then we had the we had the uh, blueberry, uh, blackberries, blackberries, and mm -hmm. not blueberries, blackberries, uh, and, and, and all that. And flip phones. And and, and right. the sliders that would slide up and they had the mm -hmm. big keyboard and everything. So. Uh, wow, I forgot about those. My yeah. kids would have those. Mm -hmm. But you're right. The BlackBerry, which was one of the early. Um, right. Or cell phones. Right. Um, so there's uh, the smartphone, the cell phone, and then the iPhone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so we could text, but it was cumbersome. Oh, it was awful. Wasn't it? Yeah. Because you'd have four letters on one yes. uh, pad, one right. to touch. Point. Well, you'd have all six because you'd have the three letters associated with each number, but then you'd have them in lowercase and uppercase. Oh, so that's you'd right. have to kind of flip through them fast. Yeah. Man, people. People got fast yeah. onto their. Right. It was I fast. never did that with oh. um, with the uh, flip phones. I didn't text then. I just refused. watching you text now. I could only imagine what that would have been Why like. Why do I text now? Why? So today we're going to talk about. So wait a minute. What? I have to ask you a question. What? What about it? What about my texting? You nothing. You're deliberate. Is that is that I, a, is that a nice way to say slow? No, the reason I ask that is because recently, uh -huh. recently, a couple of months ago, uh -huh. yeah, maybe six months ago, I learned how to do thumbs. I know. Before that, <laughs> it's not funny. It's a little funny. It's a little funny. You shouldn't make fun of your friends. <laughs> that um, another story. It is another story. Has, have you really been? Never mind. You are. You have been. Are you uncomfortable? I am now. Well, so you are, you are always being watched. Let's just say I'm, that I'm catching up. Um, but I did. I did learn to do opposable thumbs. Yes, you have. You have achieved great ape status. Great ape. <laughs> so now I am a primate. All right. So. Um, but that's part of the reason this interests me because we we um, have a digital divide between us, mm -hmm. worlds apart. Um, I have always been concerned about this because um, uh, with children who have ADHD is one of the issues that I worry about. You know, mm -hmm. how is it affecting them? My first concern was how the and there were early articles written about this is how the um, um, uh, smartphone iPhone uh, was affecting marriages. Because right. it was the beginning of people bringing their phones or iPads to bed with them, and there were there was a um, there was a plethora of um, articles that came out mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. the damage that these devices can do to a marriage mm -hmm. if, if you if you become over reliant on them. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's like having a it's like somebody it's like a third person in your relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. and that was the other concern. Yeah. So. Yeah, so, but the, some of the things that Suzanne Cain mentions in this article, I think are really important things for us to talk about because, yeah, they are. you know, I, we can certainly see the positive side of Absolutely. smartphones and their availability, but we do yeah. have to, we do have to make sure that we consider some of the, 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 uh, as you always say, the unintended consequences, right. Right. Uh, the, the, the unexpected or unforeseen consequences of, of some of this availability. The, the, the advantages and the benefits of these, uh, we, don't even, we don't really even need to talk about it. I mean, right. the ability to stay in touch with your children or right. to contact people immediately or uh, to use in emergencies. Right. Um, there were two women rescued um, yesterday. They were, at, they were um, stranded at sea for five months on a sailboat that the mast had uh, was no longer working and that it was flooded so they didn't have a radio she lost they, she lost their cell phone the first day it mm -hmm. was washed off the, the deck and so yeah. the, had they had a cell phone they yeah. would have been rescued almost immediately right because it was a satellite phone and they could have called mm -hmm. but without a cell phone they've been out there for five months they were finally rescued by a uh, fishing boat finally saw them and then a, um, a US Navy uh, vessel was nearby and went and picked wow. them up 
but cell phones have um, great benefit. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so, because given we we acknowledge all the positives, exactly. and, and we'll kind of mention some of the positives exactly. as we're going through some of these right. concerns. Mm -hmm. uh, it is important to highlight the concerns and make sure that we uh, think about ways to overcome some, the the concerns. And because right. it, well, if we look if we look at the first one that she mentions here, well. But the first thing she talks about is she differentiates heavy users from average users. Right. Okay. Right. And I think that's really yeah, important too. That, that, and this surprised me. We were talking about this in class last mm -hmm. night, and I was trying to remember the number, and I had forgotten that it's in the thousands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, a heavy user. Do, do you do you actually? You no. don't use your phone that much. No, no, I don't use my phone that much. I mean, when we say that much, it's five thousand times a day. Right. Right. They, they touch their devices 5,427 times daily on, on average. Um, compared to, to what, they, what she refers to as average users, that's 2,600. If somebody asked you, just came to how, how often do you, I don't know what question you would ask, touch, use your yeah. cell phone in a day, what would you guess? I don't know. A few hundred? I don't know. Nowhere near 2,000. Well, it, I, I think it depends because, it, look, if you're playing, let's say you're playing a game. All right. If you're playing a game, there are games where you have to touch it you frequently. You mean each touch? Should... That's what it says. It says they touch their devices an average of five thousand four hundred twenty-seven times a day. If you're well, if, if you're, you're dialing playing... a number, yeah. if you're dialing a phone number, there's uh, ten okay. times that you're touching it. So it's not just picking it up for a particular. It right. Could every time you touch. Right. It. Okay. Yeah. Right. So so it's not that. Okay, that makes a little more sense. Yeah. But... Yeah, and so if you're texting, yeah, or you know, you're like playing a game, if you're sending tweets out at, at uh, all day you know, long, every time I hear that, I get a little twinge. I know you do. That's why I mentioned it. Because, it... so so every time you touch it, that, that counts okay. according to this, this so that makes... numeric that she has. So the the heavy user, and that's what she's talking about here. She's right. talking about the heavy users, right. that they use it what five thousand, almost fifty five hundred times. Per right. day, okay. Right, so so heavy users use touch their phone twice as much a day right. as average users. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I would be an average or below. Right. And you would be average uh, maybe or above. Average. Yeah. I don't think yeah. you're a heavy user. No, I don't think I'm a heavy user. Um, we can't be heavy user users. I mean, we have sessions that last an hour, so we. Right. You, you just know, wouldn't have. There's this. like 55 minutes every hour that I don't even get to touch my phone. It's painful. <laughs> No, don't say that. <laughs> no, it's it's fine. Okay. Um, so, but but you know they're talking clearly about folks here that are on it consistently all throughout right. the day. But the top ten percent of heavy users average one hundred and thirty-two separate phone sessions daily. Right. No. I don't get anywhere near that. No. 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 Wow. So so let's so let's kind of get get into this some some of the concerns that she has right. and some of the concerns mm -hmm. she mentions and and there they are concerns that other people have talked about so she's not alone here with some of these concerns uh -huh. and i think we've talked about some of these before as well the, the first is that smartphone use decreases attention span yes now again kind of going into keeping in mind some of the things that we were just differentiating here between heavy mm -hmm. users and average users the idea that I like it that she says that it decreases attention span versus causes ADHD. Right. I, I don't like it when people say that, you know, technology causes ADHD. Right. Because it no, it doesn't. It may make us have a shorter attention span, right. but it doesn't give us ADHD. Right. And people with ADHD face a bigger challenge with right. these devices. Right. But no, it's not a cause. And, and, and it wouldn't be surprising if some of those people considered heavy users that are considered heavy users mm -hmm. are people with ADHD. Are, exactly. Mm -hmm. So ADHD is a neurobiological right. thing that, that is, that is there probably before you have your first phone. Right. So if you have ADHD, you have ADHD. The, the idea of, of it decreasing our attention span, I think is, is valid because, you know, thinking back to the days of dial up, Right, yes. uh, that awful sound that would happen when you oh, were dialing on, in computer. on computers, oh, right? Yes. Um, mm. To think of, you know, you would click connect, and then you would go and make a pot of coffee, and you would kind of <laughs> cook some things, and you'd come back and you'd say, "Yes, I want to connect," and then you go back. And, I mean, it, it would seem like it would take forever. Mm -hmm. 
now, you know, if a page isn't loading right. within a couple of seconds, we're like, what's going on? You start is banging it, on the keys. I, I, people start yelling at me through the <laughs> office suite. Is the internet down? <laughs> you know, they do. Yeah. No. So, uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's truth day. <laughs> So, but but no, it, it does happen if, if it's not loading up fast enough. We, so when we have these, our phones where mm -hmm. information is available immediately, uh, yes. we we get impatient. That's right. Uh, we, we text someone, we expect them to respond pretty quickly. Uh, when we post something on any form mm -hmm. of social media, we expect an immediate response or we look for uh, responses immediately. And, mm -hmm. you know, so it does have it does likely have an effect on our attention span. shortens your attention span yeah right because you expect things to happen very quickly mm -hmm. okay and and i think that's something that goes along with this that i don't think that she mentions in any of the other other areas and, and i i did a talk uh, or i was part of a forum the other day yeah. uh on social media mm -hmm. and somebody mentioned this in there and and it's something that made me think and, and that is because it shortens our attention span, one of the other things that it might do is it might interfere with our ability to delay gratification. She mentions that in here about delayed gratification. Is it, was it in here too? Yes, I, I could here. not remember because yeah. I, I, they were talking about it in the forum and mm -hmm. I could not remember um, if how she mentioned it here. But right. um, so so yeah, it, it this short atten shortened abbreviated attention span right. has an impact. It, it has a role. It does, and you can see that if you if you are, and we, we all know heavy users. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all know people right. who are heavy users, and and you can see that in these what she's talking about right. the decreased attention span. One of the things that I notice with attention span is that when I talk to a heavy user, I can feel their impatience right. because I'm not talking, I'm not responding fast right. enough. They're used to electronic responses mm -hmm. that are immediate mm -hmm. and short. Right. And that's not how we speak to each other. Right. And I, I can feel their impatience as I'm speaking. Mm -hmm. yeah, or they'll say, can you hurry up and just get, you know, get it over with. Right. And that's not how we talk to each other. Right. But that is how we uh, communicate digitally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the second one is also a concern. Yeah. Um, and that concerns us as, um, as educators. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. People, did you know that, uh, you probably did, Facebook is the... Um, largest news source in the country. Right. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. But Facebook doesn't fact check. Right. It's a it's a um, it's you can throw a whatever non you... non peer reviewed uh, source. Right. There's yeah. nobody checking sources. Right. There's nobody checking accuracy. But it is the most used mm -hmm. news source in the country. Right. The solution for that is for them to have fact checkers. Right. That would make them the Ministry of Education and uh, Ministry of Information in the United States. Yeah. Facebook would become, in effect, they would become the Ministry of Edu of Information. That would be a fantastic title to have. Can you imagine? Yeah. I mean, talk about unintended consequences. Yeah. So Facebook is talking about fact checking. They're right. good, they're they're beginning to move in that direction. Well, with all this information, uh, all this uh, stuff coming out about you know Russia's involvement in the in the election and all that kind of stuff, it makes sense. We didn't tell them what the second one was though. The second one is that users demonstrate an over reliance on a digital information source. That's right. So so we have. Um, yeah, well, it's related to the to Facebook thing that you're talking about, but you know, mm -hmm. we have there's blogs and there's um, you know you can get an RSS feed for just about anything, right. and so it just comes right to your phone and you're you're reading it through through any source, and the real concern I think is that you know there is no one fact checking any of these things, which on one side is fine, you know people can write blogs and talk about whatever they want to talk mm -hmm. about Wikipedia. But right, it's not fact checked, but but it's edited at least. Right, they're People doing they're, to they're working to do better. But mm -hmm. the the real concern is that at the same time we're not doing anything to teach people how to differentiate valid information from invalid information because Facts now and opinion. you Google it. Mm -hmm. Okay, Google takes you to websites. Right, websites can be dot gov dot com dot org, and we tell our or students dot just about anything. Right. Lots, lots and we tell our students be careful with dot com. 
mm-hmm. because it may or may not be ac- it, it could just be propaganda. It could be just an ad- an mm-hmm. advertisement. They're, they're, right. Com means they're trying to sell you something. Right. Okay. And so we we warn our students about that. But in day to day communication, nobody's look nobody's thinking about right. that. You go to Google, bang, go to this website, bang, get your information. Right. And people are becoming reliant on that. Uh, information gathering process right but you, you still now mm-hmm. and, and what you were saying was very has been very true um, for the most part over the past few years but now you can get a dot org without it being an organization without it being anything else so exactly so you um, still don't know right right um, now mm-hmm. your, your safest bet is with dot gov because then you know it's a you know a, a government sponsored source that's going to hopefully have more accurate right. or uh, at least uh, information that can be backed up. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, you, you don't know what's out there. And, and we're saying that as dot com owners, we, right. we, we have, you know, several uh, websites com. Right. and, and um, we've had a dot org in right. the past. Right. Um, but it was, you know, it consisted of our blogs and mm-hmm. our podcasts and things like that. But, you know, so you're going to have some sources that have Right. valid and, and useful information, you're going to have mm-hmm. those that don't. And we're not doing much to help people differentiate. Um, we, we talk about, um, we have to teach this, however. Right. There, there's, uh, we should be teaching students, but I'm not sure that there, I'm not sure that anybody will listen because we have um, TV news programs um, that do the same thing. today that do exactly the same right. thing. And people don't make those analytical decisions they're not mm-hmm. and she talks about right. this um in the paper that we we're no longer we are becoming less analytical in our thinking and right. we just we're trading careful analysis for speed right okay right. And, and and all of this leads very nicely into the third point the that she phone. makes here which is that smartphone users are increasingly unable to think for themselves right that is absolutely true and, and i i think to me, this is not just an issue with smartphones. This is an issue with, with media. Media um, in general. Uh, in, mm-hmm. in general. Because right. what, what happens is we unknowingly, because of the way the system has started to work, the only information that we receive is information related to what we have searched. So, you know, if you right. go if you go on to Amazon and you search for mm-hmm. Uh, a particular item. The next time you go to Facebook, there's going to be an ad for that item in the in the margin, mm-hmm. um, because the way that the all, all of the cookies and, and the um, just the bots work, mm-hmm. it, it keeps all that stuff connected. So when you look up information about a particular event or a particular issue mm-hmm. or a particular problem, mm-hmm. you're going to that the information that you receive is going to be somewhat skewed in a direction consistent with other things that you've looked at and other things that you've explored. Amazon is not the only outfit involved right. in that. Right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Data mining is a as a industry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So so we unknowingly you know, many people who think that they're very well informed um, are still only getting information from a, a restricted limited sources. Yeah, right. so you, re- you got to be careful of that. That's right, but but, but we have big cap, and we don't think for ourselves, right? Because um, if you're shopping today, mm-hmm. um, all you have to do is take a photo. You know, should I buy this? Which right. color should I get? Right. You know, um, uh, college students when mm-hmm. they leave home, um, they walk out of class, right. and if they have a question or they need to make a decision, mm-hmm. they simply text or call their parents who right. are. Um, near their phones. Right. And so the uh, college students don't need to solve their own problems because they have cell phones. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that that's the more most direct relationship to what she's talking about mm-hmm. here. And, and I was, I don't know, for some reason the, it got, it got went into my mind about the, uh, uh, about the, about politics and all that kind of stuff, because everything just gets propaganda. skewed. Um, well, maybe it's because you said propaganda. That's what kind of made my brain go in that direction. Yeah. But um, see, that's ha- what happens. You're like Amazon. You make me think in a particular way, even if I don't want to think that direction. So, but but we're, we aren't able to think for ourselves because we um, the the information that we get guides us in different directions. Right. And, and you're right. Um, we, we've written about that in our column before. That you know, I remember when I was in when I was a kid, 
my parents would send me up to the store to to buy mm-hmm. you know a loaf of bread. Right. right? That's right. So I'd ride my bike up you know a mile away and and go uh, get a loaf of bread. And and if they didn't have the brand of bread that we typically ate. I had to make a decision. Either I was going to ride back home ride back for a home. mile, right. get in trouble because I didn't have the bread, and then have to go back and get it, and then come back, or I had to make a decision. Which one looks the closest? Which right. one is about? Which one can I afford with the money right. that I was given? Mm-hmm. You know, I had to make a decision for that. Now, yeah. kids, people don't, don't have to. to make that decision. No, Mm-mm. you know, the, everything is provided with this simple, uh, a simple text or mm-hmm. a quick phone call, yeah. and we don't have to make decisions. And I don't have to wait. I don't right. have to wait for a response. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, it's immediate. So, yeah. Which creates the fourth problem. Right. A lazy mind. A lazy mind. Right. So smart. Our, our table is so squeaky. Why is it squeaky? I don't know. All of a sudden it's squeaky. I don't okay, know. I'll put my hands on the table. That's surprised even me. Yeah. And I'm usually... Unsurprised. Lazy mind. Yes. It, so smartphone use contributes to a lazy mind. Mm-hmm. Again, I think that this is a really interesting perspective, an interesting idea. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you don't have to think. Right. You don't have to make decisions. So, you know, you don't have to think for yourself. And, you know, the, the natural uh, progression to that is you really don't have to think that much. Right. right. If you don't know something, it's just a quick search. You got it. Right. And also this, um, she mentions here, and I was, that's why I, I was reading it a little more carefully. She mentions the checking habit, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay, uh, creating the lazy mind, because um, we have this, you know, this repetitive going into, mm-hmm. you know, when when you go into your phone, you know, right. there's this constant checking. Uh, so you don't have to remember much. You don't have to think much because you always have an answer. There's always an answer easily right. accessible. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, now here's a place that I think it's important that we we throw in the possibility of some positives okay and, and and that is there what is the consequence of not having to think not having to to keep that some of that information in our right. active memory in our mm-hmm. active mind you know it, it I remember I still remember my home phone number mm-hmm. from when I was when growing up sure um, I still remember my grandmother's phone number right. I still remember my aunt's phone number mm-hmm. um, but I don't know my kid's current phone number right. because I don't have to. It's in my phone. Um, now, I probably should because if something happened to my phone, then I wouldn't be able to get in touch with right. them. But I don't, I don't know it. I know my wife's phone number. It's funny because my kids are just a few years older. My oldest child mm-hmm. is just two or three years older than your oldest child. I know, I have three children. I know the phone numbers of the older two. Mm-hmm. I don't know the phone number of the younger, of mm-hmm. the youngest child yeah. who's, who's 18. I didn't, I, because their numbers I had to dial mm-hmm. when we right. took phones. Right. I never had to dial hers. It right. was in my uh, contacts. Right. And I just, you know, had to hit a hit right. the screen and that's what why about I don't know your, number. What about your, those are your, your, your three mm-hmm. current kids. You, you have, uh, and I don't know Jonathan's. Jonathan, who, who's a, uh, well into right. adulthood, mm-hmm. you don't know his number. No, because his um, probably changed a lot. His changed yeah. um, when he got a cell phone, and and I never I never had to call it because when he got his cell phone, I had my cell phone. Yeah, and I never had to memorize yeah. his number. I don't know my I don't know my mother's phone number. I don't know my stepdaughter's. Yeah, mm-hmm. so we don't have to remember no. those phone numbers anymore, and and there is I, again I think that there's pros and cons to that. I right. think that um, I think it's. I think that there's a, a, the idea of limited storage space right. in, in our brains, and, and so we don't have to store that information, which can be a positive. Again, it right. can lead to problems if something happens to our phone and we need to call somebody and you, can't, you don't know anybody's phone number. Right. That's a problem. But otherwise, you know, it's, it's information that we don't need to store. Right, right. And it, it is a bit of a clutter, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. And especially today. There was a time when you only had to remember three or four or five phone right. numbers. Today, you'd have to you you can't you don't have the memory capacity for your contact list. Right, just your family. You would have what six people phone for everybody. Right, right. six numbers that you have not to remember. one home phone. You have right. however many family members you have. So, uh, so it would become an excessive memory burden. Right, okay. right. Um, and, and the same thing with calendars. Right. Like I, I, 
one of the things I love about the, my phone is that I don't have to, I don't have to keep my calendar in the front of my mind right. to, to remember this is what I got to do today. This is what mm -hmm. I got to do tomorrow. I just put it in my calendar and I can my calendar will remind me now. Mm -hmm. Again, we become dependent on our phone right. for those reasons. Mm -hmm. So it, there are some potential consequences for that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it also limits and um, sometimes completely eliminates the risk for missing uh, a meeting or missing some obligation that you have. No, I think the calendar, the notes, um, mm -hmm. all that stuff, I think those are all, those are the advantages of this device. Right. The fact that we don't have to have our desk calendar, mm -hmm. we don't have to have our computer on, we have our, compa there's no reason to miss a meeting today right. because it's on your, it's right there. Mm -hmm. You know, and you get reminders, mm -hmm. you know, that mm -hmm. can tells you, hey, three o'clock, you have to be someplace. Right. So I think those are all positives right. of the, of the um, cell phones. Yeah. And I'm not sure I would trade those conveniences right. for the, for the uh, disadvantages that might accrue. Right. I wouldn't trade those. There are some things I think we should think seriously about. Yeah, I, I think mm -hmm. that, you know, all of that, those conveniences would fall into the category that she has here of right. creating a lazy mind, mm -hmm. but those are, you know, we, we still want to be thinking. That's right. We just don't right. want to be uh, overburdened with storing information that we just don't mm -hmm. need to store. Right. That makes sense? Right. Okay. Now this is sort of repetitive. Um, next one? Hijacks concentration. Right. Know. Research um, finds that smartphone use hijacks right. concentration. Yeah. You said research shows. Right. One of the things that I, I want to remind listeners, um, one of the reasons we chose this, uh, this particular article, is that each of the things we're discussing, I think there are about 10 things that mm -hmm. she mentions. Each of these things is backed by research. Okay, this is not just her mm -hmm. opinion. This is not her uh, diatribe against cell phones or right. grinding an ax. There's research supporting all of the things that we're talking about here. Right. And that's what I like about this. For the example, the hijacking concentration uh, came from a 2015 study from Florida State. Right. Okay. So these are these are nicely researched and they're studied. Um, not. I won't talk about facts. Right. I almost but, said alternative facts. But 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 what this I like is not fake news. What, what I like about what she wrote here is it's she's not saying that it uh, that you can't concentrate That's when right. you have it. What she's saying is is that if you're in the in the, if in the middle of a task and you get a notification ding, right. It pulls your attention, even if it's just momentary, it pulls your right. attention, and then you have to go back to the task, and so then you have to get refocused on the task, and so it interrupts task right. performance. Mm -hmm. um, it's not saying that you're incapable, right. um, again, not saying that it creates ADHD or anything like that, it's yeah. just saying it, it pulls you away from what you're doing, right. and then you have to refocus and reorient when you come back. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's very true. Right. So. Now the next is the mere presence of smartphones nearby <laughs> reduces cognitive capacity. Uh -huh. So this is from a study from this year, 2017, this year, right. by uh, Adrian Ward. In two experiences, that they explored what they called the drain, the brain drain. Brain drain. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a hypothesis: is that having a smartphone nearby, quote, may occupy limited capacity cognitive resources, thereby uh, leaving fewer available resources for other tasks while also undercutting cognitive performance. And what that means is, if, if you have your cell phone nearby and you're trying to do some other task, right. that cell phone is gonna be a distraction, right. okay? Um, and this is what we tell children about homework. Right. Okay? They say, no, I need my phone for my homework. Right. I have to use it for this, that, or the other. And we're, our parents argue that, no, your phone is really a distraction. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really what we're talking about right. here, is that you should be focused here, but your phone keeps um, competing mm -hmm. for your cognitive capacity. Right. And the phone is so compelling that you're almost always going to go to the phone rather than the task you should be working right. on. So what does this remind you of? From, Nothing. From back 20 years ago, 30 years ago. We said the same thing about TV. Oh, don't do your homework with the TV with on. With the TV on, right. Don't so, listen to music while you're doing your homework. Right, right. And so if, you, if you're if you doing your homework at the uh, at the kitchen table, mom or dad or somebody's in the, in the television room watching TV, mm -hmm. that constant distraction is there. And so it's, it's not a new thing. It, it makes sense. 
um, it makes sense that it's sitting there that it's going to you're going to have some attention drawn to it, especially if you have the sound on or if you have notifications on so that it keeps lighting up and that kind of thing. I had a student tell me that she was going to go to Starbucks to do her work. Mm -hmm. I, I, you couldn't do that. Oh, no. No, no I wouldn't. No. Mm -mm. no. I wouldn't get... No, I'd be looking around and talking and mm -hmm. moving around. No. Yeah. I couldn't. No. But, but it's... But, but you know, the, the idea that... And I think it is, again, we, we have to say for some people, it, mm -hmm. that's Pot, yes. very, very challenging for them. But there are people who, um, some of those, some of that extra stimulation isn't as, of, as much of an impact on them. I think that the ding that you got oh, a yeah. text sure. is going to draw you every It's going time. to pull your attention. I mean, right, just, absolutely. We have, we have really, I mean, that... That is clear. That's happened. Yeah. So if you're if you're reading a passage and you get a text, right, you're going to stop reading and go to the text. Right. Yeah. No. What I'm referring to here is what he what they say is the mere presence. It just being there. No. Mm -hmm. I I don't know that it being there is going to have that same effect on everyone. Right. I think there are certainly people. There there are certainly those mm -hmm. who if it's around. They just can't pull themselves away right. from it, and it requires so much of their so attention right. that they have to they have to attend to everything. Right. Um, but yes, the the dings or the the, the light up notifications, mm -hmm. those kinds of things, it's going to pull most, if right. not everyone's uh, attention to it. So mm -hmm. yes, that in those cases, absolutely. Right. Um, so Highly yeah. distracting. Yes, yeah. we so talked about that. Studies and surveys mm -hmm. have proven that smartphones are highly distracting. Right. Um, I, I feel like we've mentioned that one yeah, a number of times that. now. So we know but it's distracting. It robs us of our attentional capacity. Um, and those are sort of repetitive things. It occupies... The one I struggle with is occupying cognitive capacity. Right. Because I think if you're using your phone, mm -hmm. if you're in your phone... Um, it's taking up cognitive capacity that you might could use for something else, but mm -hmm. yeah. I, I'm not sure that that. Yeah, I, I and that I have a little bit of a much. difficulty with the um, w with the that it makes the lazy brain and it makes yeah. It, yeah um, I have a little bit of a hard time with that one. Yeah, because I don't want to have to remember all those numbers right. or its street addresses. Why right. should I memorize everybody's yeah. street address and zip? You know, that's that's where the convenience I think right. uh, factor comes in. So I don't yeah. have any problem with that. Yeah, I do have problems with this one. That anxiety and sleep problems are other are other common consequences of obsessive phone use, smartphone use. Yeah. Because I, the heavy users are using their phone more hours per mm -hmm. day. They're the people who are like, I turn my phone off at night. Yeah. I don't need an alarm clock. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So that's one advantage. But I turn it off because I don't want to have any interaction after a certain time every month. Mm -hmm. I want to, it's part every of my night. sleep hide at, at night. Yeah. You said every, after a certain time of the month. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I sleep more than once a month. It doesn't look like it, but I do. So thank you. Um, my brother said I look tired. Um, so I'll perk up. Um, yes, a certain time of the night. I don't want any more stimulation because now right. it's now I have to get ready to sleep. Right. And I don't want the stimulation. But heavy phone users tend to keep their phones with them and right. keep their phones on all the time. Mm -hmm. My children constantly tell me, oh, I, I ran out of bat. My phone died. Right. How can your phone die? Because they're always living on 10 or 12% because mm -hmm. they're constantly using their phones. Mm -hmm. And then they, they don't charge them at night. They use them at night. Right. Okay. So they're, they're constantly dying. Um, but I turn mine off mm -hmm. so it doesn't bother my sleep, but she puts anxiety and sleep together. Right. Okay. Um, Which is interesting. What about the anxiety part? Yeah. I think cell phones create anxiety. I think it, I think, I think it has the potential of, you know what your problem is? What? You use a cell phone correctly. You use it. You're a heavy, you're a heavy user. No. I don't think so. I think you are. You you're playing games. Mm -hmm. You're you have a you have a watch. Mm -hmm. um, you're constantly connected, uh -huh. but your use doesn't interfere with everything else that you do. Right. Okay. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. So you can't use your you can't use yourself as a um, model. Well, 
Because you're atypical. You are atypical because you use yourself. So you said all of that just to call me atypical. In part, but I'm not finished. <laughs> you you use your cell phone um, as a tool, mm-hmm. like you use your computer. Right. Okay. And it doesn't take over your life. You you are in con- Here's what it is. You're in control of your cell phone. Mm-hmm. Your cell phone doesn't control you. Right. Right. That's what I'm trying to say. And and I think that t- to me the anxiety aspect of it is mm-hmm. a is maybe somewhat of a chicken or the egg. Your phone does because yes. if a person yes uh, it, it can I believe it can exacerbate anxiety. Okay, so you have an anxious person. Are they're probably going to, going to be made more anxious yes. by the cell. They're they're not going to be able to um, ignore the ding. They're Absolutely. not going to be able to ignore a text. They're, okay. they're they're going to have a very difficult time pulling away from it if they if they send a message or if they post something. It's going to be difficult for them to pull themselves away from it without check because they want to check the status they want to check to see how many likes it has and they want to check all those things and that's going to that increases their anxiety and conversely a heavy user could become anxious Mm -hmm. about keeping up right i don't um people tell me my 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 wife will tell me well i texted you but you didn't respond that means I didn't respond immediately. Right. Okay. Because I can't always respond. Right. There are times when I can't yeah. respond for several hours. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yesterday, if I'm teaching, for example, right. I'm not going to respond to anything for at least three hours. Absolutely. Okay? So. Yeah, I send a text because we see patients in blocks right. for the most part. Right. Mm-hmm. We, we, we start and then we see patients back to back until we have a break for lunch and then we see mm-hmm. them back to back until we're done for the day. Right. When I'm starting with that first patient, um, if I'm having any communication with my kids or with my mm-hmm. wife or anybody, I, I text say going in with patients now. Right. Uh, I'll, I'll try to check in between if I can. Otherwise, I'm not available for the right. next little while. And they know our teaching schedule. Right. So my family knows that on Wednesday and Thursday night, mm-hmm. I mean, you can text me, but I'm not going to respond until at some time. I like after calling it. you while you're in class. Sometimes I take your calls in I class. know. I told them about you last night. To yeah. my class about you. Yes. But I think that um, I see people um, uh, becoming anxious when their phones are nearby. That they mm-hmm. that they have they feel that they have to respond. You can see their eyes dart yeah. to it. Yeah. And you can feel their impatience with right. you. You know. But I, I just don't know if it's if the phone created the anxiety or if the anxiety yeah. was there and is just now focused on the phone. I think if, and if you they have, didn't have the phone, it would be focused on something else. I think it's just like ADHD. Mm-hmm. You know, if you have ADHD, a phone could, could add to your problems. Right. If you have anxiety, it could add. Even if you have depression, mm-hmm. it could mm-hmm. add to your problems. So, yes, I think it, it could make any condition worse. Yeah. Uh, exacerbate any mm-hmm. con- underlying condition. Yeah. And cause, yeah. I'm not sure that it causes them. I think mm-hmm. what it causes... I think the biggest, the, the biggest causative factor is that it could result in um, interfering with, with person-to-person relationships. Right. I mean, and, and that sort of gets us into the, this right. last one, that, right. that, that work engagement or just the engagement with right. others is interfered with by uh, excessive use. I think supervisors must be going crazy because you know that everybody has cell phones uh, on their desks. Right. And it's cutting into work time. Right. And you see those articles that come out all the time, you know, uh, U.S. workers spend, right. you know, <laughs> this many hours. They're almost on their phone as much as they're working. Right. They separate yeah, half and the you, time is spent working. And you look at anybody's computer throughout the day, <laughs> and there is always a, a tab tabs. Uh, for Facebook and, <laughs> right. and stuff. And uh, so you, you know it that's it, happening. It would be such a fascinating study to, set, to find out how much time is spent on Facebook. Yeah, or I mean, shopping. There are out there. I, I haven't. Uh, I haven't looked at the recent. But they're data. estimates, right? Because oh, yeah. people oh, aren't yeah. going to admit it. Oh yeah. yeah so sure. they're they're underestimates. But yeah. uh, no, that it, it's cutting into work time for sure. Yeah. You know, for yeah. students and for workers. Yeah. So, um, so if you are a heavy phone user, think about these things. Think about how what impact it's having on your life. I I think that well we've said this many times before. Smartphones aren't going anywhere. No. You know, it, no. it's... They're going to become better and faster and right. more useful. And, and so they're going to be more um, intrusive, more 
included in our life mm-hmm. as we as we go. You know what? I, it hit me the other day. Um, I don't know why I was thinking about it. I think it was the portable phone issue came up for some reason. Um, people used to uh, have conversations about, well, I use my cell phone for this mm-hmm. and my landline for this. Right. Most people don't have landlines anymore. Mm, I don't. They, you, there's no need to have a yeah. landline. Um, and, and I forgot that yeah. there was a time when... Do you still s- have a landline? No. Okay. Mm-hmm. No, we haven't. And th- we have a phone somewhere in our house, but mm-hmm. they're in drawers now. And yeah. we don't, because n- th- nobody calls that number. Right. Nobody, we don't use it for anything. Yeah. And um, so that's gone the way of the dinosaur, right. you know, the landline. Um, but, I'm, but I'm most concerned about um, fact-checking. Yeah. I think that people are relying on, and as you say, it's skewed mm-hmm. to begin with because of data mining, because right. we know where you are and we know what you're looking at, so mm-hmm. we're going to feed you that stuff. Right. Um, you know, you bought this, so you may be interested in this. Right. Um, right. And the last time you looked up that, you were think you were also right. looking at this, so here's right. how this... Yeah. yeah. So, so you're getting skewed inputs. Right. Okay. And uh, we tend to rely, we want fast rather than mm-hmm. accurate. We're right. willing to accept fast without checking to see if it's really accurate. Right. And we saw that in, the, we, we have heard about this over and over again from the last presidential election, right. that there was so much uh, fake news. Right. And people talk about alternative facts and mm-hmm. all these things because we're just flooded with information. And it is difficult, granted, it is difficult to sort out. Uh, what's accurate and what's not accurate, right. you know, and so, but we have that obligation, especially if you are um, college educated, if you're a thoughtful person, yeah. I think we all have the obligation to be careful about what yeah. we call accurate information. It, it, it always reminds me back, and I wish that I could get the clip just so I could put it into everything that we talk, whenever we talk about these things, but the clip from uh, Inside Out, when yes. they're on the train and mm-hmm. the two boxes fell over and all the things mixed up and right. some were fact it, it, the box one right. box was labeled facts the other box was labeled opinions right. and she goes ah just put it in nobody can tell the <laughs> nobody, difference anyways that's right. nobody knows uh, the difference anyway it's you know it, it, it's true and and so it's really important that we you know to battle that the only thing we can really do is to teach how to do research teach how to investigate information that's right uh, don't take uh, the first news source that you get right. you, you have to look into it a little bit more and, and maybe that's a, a place where, okay, it creates a lazy mind. Right. Maybe that's what we're talking about there is that the lazy mind is that we're just going to take the first bit of information that we get and we're just going to use that and go with that instead of really looking into things. I mean, there, there's just so much information at your fingertips right. when you have your right. cell phone with you, your smartphone. That's right. And people are using cell phones as computers. Right. Okay, that's the other thing that this device is serving more than one function. Mm-hmm. And we tell parents that, mm-hmm. that please remember that this is your child's um, record player, right? Or what we called a record player, or a. You have that look. Again. I did. You there was have, no look. I know what that look means. There was no look. Is there, is there a phonograph? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'll talk to you. A-track? I will talk to you now. Um, no, it's whatever you call it. I said record player. <laughs> Um, no, it is their source of music. Right. Okay. Um, TV. So it, it is their TV. It is their movie mm-hmm. channel. Um, it's their alarm clock. Yeah. It's their calendar. It's their telephone. It's mm-hmm. their everything. Okay. Yeah. So they're doing multiple tasks with this thing. Mm-hmm. So you say, mm-hmm. well, she spends too much time on her phone. That's because her phone does so many right. tasks that right. we used to separate. Those mm-hmm. tasks used to be separate, differentiated. Right. Now it's the same device that does all those tasks. Right. At the same time, what I worry about the most is the damage that these phones are doing to um, personal relationships mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and person-to-person, what I would call etiquette. Mm-hmm. If, if you are on your cell phone, and, and this may be generational, if I see a person on her cell phone, I will wait until she's finished because the cell phone feels like another person. Mm-hmm. So if you were talking to somebody else, I wouldn't dare interrupt the conversation. Mm-hmm. To me, the cell phone is, is whoever's there is a person. Mm-hmm. So if you're talking to that person, I'm going to wait until you're finished. Right. And if you're talking to me, then pay attention to me. And when I'm finished, you can do whatever else you want to do. But mm-hmm. don't stop. Don't ignore me and go to this mm-hmm. other person. Um, 
So I think we're losing some. I think we're losing the etiquette battle. Right. Yeah. And, and I don't know. I, maybe no. other people don't feel that way. No, I, I agree. I, yeah. I think that I think we're losing some of our social skills. Yeah, we are. Um, I think that's what's. Yeah. That, that's where I notice it the most. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But that wasn't listed in this. Mentioned in no, this, this is just cognitive capacity. But, yeah. Um, yeah, it's distracting. Uh, it takes up space, um, but they are convenient. They are. Mm-hmm. So, anything else that you wanted to add? No, but I think we should talk more about this someday. I think we should also talk about the addiction factor. Every 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 week when we're working to put together topics and articles for the uh, for the podcast, mm-hmm. just this is a little insider information for you guys. Doctor Richard always says we should do something about cell phone use because this is an important issue this is something that we deal with with patients almost daily and so it's we we have lots of issues with this and so there's there's always things to talk about when it comes to so this isn't cell phones this isn't meant to be snide no okay were you taking it that way oh that's where i thought it was going i know i thought here he goes again that's why i shifted okay (laughs) You see what I'm up against, yeah, huh. and it never ever stops. I can see you see you on the screen there, so I could I knew that uh, he's thinking I'm gonna go that way. So I'm gonna there was curveball. I said, wait a minute, he sounds like he's serious. Uh huh. So it's World Series time. <laughs> it's so, World Series time. So he's gonna throw me off. Breaking curveball. Yes. So, but that's it for today, then, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. I gotta go check my uh, my cell phone. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid.